afternoon, folks. Big Bo with RVs with Big Bo at Parkway RV Center. And guys, hadn't done a Class A in a day or two, but uh, got one in that probably won't be here 24 hours from now. So every time I post one of these, people just go crazy for these little motor homes, and rightfully so. It's kind of the best of both worlds. A lot of people like the convenience and the size of a Class C, but they like the drivability of a Class A. This, like I said, this is this is a class, this is the best of both worlds. This is a 2016 Thor Axis 24.1, smallest one they build. It's got a slide out, and what's nice about this one compared to most of the smaller motorhomes, it's only got 19,000 miles. And guys, this thing's less than half price of a brand new one. They're $130,000 for the new 2022s and 23s on RV Trader and this one's like i said 19,000 miles 25 and a half feet long that's its longest point bumper to bumper these thing it's got it's built on the e450 chassis or e350 chassis with a 6.8 liter triton v10 so this is a lot smaller height width and length than your standard class a bus style motorhome it drives and steers just like a class c got 16 inch tires just like a class c it's got um um but you set up like a class a you got a class a body and these are very very popular one of the best selling motor homes on the market today and i just i only get one or two of these 24.1s in a year and the phones just light up every time i post one of these for sale and especially one with ultra low miles like this because seems like the smaller the motor home the more people use them and the more miles they put on them and the more use they show on it but it's 25 and a half feet long. Uh, it's got some uh, Michelin tires on it that look great. Got an outside television, got a 4KW Onan gasoline generator running everything inside, 180 hours on it. Got a nice power awning with a light strip. Looks great. I mean, you've got big storage bays, at least big for a 25 foot motorhome pass through better clean this thing just hardly shows any use six gallon dsi gas electric water heater 32 inch outside television pretty nice one guys 30 amp uh, electrical service is your power cord does have a 13,500 btu ducted roof air that's how on right now cooling it off nicely inside Previous owners did add some extra storage for some stinky slinkies, sewer hoses. Uh, also has a trailer hitch on the back. Now, according to the specs, this is rated for 8,000 pounds. Now, I would not put 8,000 pounds behind an E-Series chassis. Um, I would probably cap that at 5,500, 6,000 pounds at the most. Uh, backup camera works great. Got a TPO roof system. There's no HD max fade. You can see this thing's been probably kept under cover most of its life. Generator looks great. Now these do not have jacks. The axes do not, the aces do, which are built on a class A chassis, which are wider, longer, and taller. But these short little axes don't have jacks and really don't have much of a need for them. But Pretty neat guys, 20, 25 and a half feet long, about the same length as my little class B plus and uh, incredible visibility. And these things get great fuel mileage, at least for a, a motor home, for, especially for a class A. Uh, they do actually do better on fuel than a class C or a class B plus. What I read online, of course guys, you know, when you read stuff online like the forums, and reviews and stuff like that. I mean, what you read is, is not really a, a verified fact. You're just reading people's opinions on the fuel mileage they get. And you really don't know the driving conditions and how they came up with that and all that. So just take it with a grain of salt. But, um, you know, some people claim 60, 65 miles an hour level ground with no wind. They were getting thir over 13 miles a gallon with these little 24.1 axes. Um, very rarely does that happen uh, but I'm gonna say if you drive conservatively you'd probably get 10 11 12 miles a gallon depends on if you're going uphill or downhill and you know if you're going against a headwind before we go inside I'm gonna pop a drone up show you a roof shop roof looks great 
which pretty much verifies that this thing's been kept under cover between uses. Um, hang on one second, I'll be right back. And you can see that roof look great. Now let's look inside this little 24.1. And at least it's cooled off. Today's supposed to be the last hot day, probably for the year, 92 degrees right now. Supposed to drop off into the 70s tomorrow and we're supposed to stay in the 70s and low 80s for as far as the weather forecast will go for the next 15 days. So I would say hopefully this hot weather is gone for the year, at least here in Northwest Georgia. So. Now, I do have all the tables in here. It does have a, I didn't put it up, <coughs> and I apologize, but it does have a long table that sits up right here, and you see the holes in the floor for the poles and everything. And it's also got a little coffee table that sits in the front, a coffee table um, that you can swivel your front seats around and use for your front captain's chairs. And everything's back here, and you can see uh, there's your long table and... If you can see it up against the up against the wall is your short round table that go between your front seats and all three peg legs are there. Uh, 32 inch TV, all the electronics are in here. Backup camera does work great. Uh, front seats look great, no flaking furniture in this one. Incredible visibility. You do have a power shade that comes down for privacy. 19,000 miles, no check engine lights, no warning lights. Go ahead and crank it up. I had the uh, motor off for so I can operate the awning in the bed while I was taking pictures. 19,627.7 miles, no check engine lights, no warning lights. Yes, we are going to drive it later in the video. And I'll show you what this motorhome looks like with the slide out in. And because it's just a small sofa slide, there's not really much difference. Both seats swivel for party seating. Got a large dash. And guys, you can see it's a vinyl cover dash. There's no pick marks like from claws from a cat or a dog sitting up there, which is they love to sit up there in this style motorhome, which out there tells me they haven't had pets in here. Besides the fact there's no smoke or pet odors. And I'm pretty sensitive to that. Uh, since I don't have, I don't smoke, and I don't have pets in the house or my RV, so I'm pretty sensitive to that when I can, when I when one's been in an RV, I can usually tell. And uh, backup camera works great. And guys, I apologize, my video looks a little different. I'm trying my video on 4K with a wider screen. Uh, yesterday I did on my new camera. I did a 5.3K. Um, and it took five hours for that 30 minute video to upload to YouTube off, five, off one gig fiber optic internet. So the what I do, if I was doing one video a week, it would be no problem. But considering I try to do one or two videos a day, I don't think 5.3K is gonna be something I'm gonna be able to do and keep my videos pumping out every day. I was here at almost nine o'clock last night doing a 30 minute video um between the editing and the uploading because of that huge file size of that 5.3k video which you can't tell much difference unless you're watching it on a tv anyway if you're watching it on a phone or a tablet you, you, there's not going to be much difference between a 4k and a 5.3k but so hopefully this video still looks all right on five on 4k with a uh with a 16 by 9 screen and a uh, 120 frames per second so like I said, next few videos, I will be experimenting a little bit with my camera, seeing which one looks good and processes efficiently for me on the backside of doing these videos so that I'm not stuck just doing one or two videos a week because of the uh, processing time. Uh, you do have nice countertops, single basin sink, countertop extender, 
gives you a little extra food prep area. I know this is a small kitchen, but this is a small motor home, so that kind of goes hand in hand. TV works great, looks good. 119 hours now. Um, should have a three burner stove top. There's your remote control for your television. All the TVs are in here, bedroom TV, outside TV, and uh, living room TV. This is a microwave convection oven. The ducted roof air feels good. You do have the six foot 10 ceiling height. You can see from the refrigerator that they haven't used this thing a lot. Uh, a good thing I like to look at to see if one's been lived in, this is six cubic foot by the way, is look at the shelves, the racks, because you know when people live in one, they're all the time opening the refrigerator up, getting stuff off, putting stuff back in. Well, they're gonna scrape paint off these right here. So. When you see little scrapes in the in the grates, that means it's it's somebody's had heavy use of that refrigerator. And the fact that this one looks practically new tells me that this unit's been used recreationally. Not that I'd want to live in a 25 foot motor home anyway, but a lot of people do. And the freezer's already getting cold. In fact, it feels really good. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, this air conditioner does work and it does feel good, but when it's this hot outside, you know, it takes these things pretty much overnight to really get one comfortable. When it's 90 plus degrees outside, you can't just turn an air conditioner on expect it to cool the RV off in a couple hours. You pretty much gotta turn it on the day before. Yeah, it'll drop it, you know, 15, 20 degrees at the most, but from the outside temperature, but until you let it sit overnight. Guys, I apologize about that. My camera overheated, which I was afraid of that with this new 11 with a media mod, but uh, y'all just bear with me. I'll just try to move very slow, I'm not move my camera around much. Maybe it won't overheat it, but like I said, the screens are in the closet, so maybe they can, uh, at least they left them in here, so we'll, we'll snap them all back in for you. Uh, what's nice about the 24.1 is the versatility of the rear bedroom. Right now it's set up with two twin beds, but, and this is great for a couple that may just not wanna sleep together, honestly. Or if you've got two people that are not a couple that want two separate beds, or you've got somebody on a CPAP machine, oxygen machine, uh, you've got a place there to keep it in between. Or if you want to make it a king size bed, very, very simple to do so. You've got your extra cushion you can just pop right in here. It's got a board on the bottom for support. And as easy as that to make those two twins a king size bed. Of course, it's got a TV in here as well as a Bluetooth stereo. And that's so easy that, I mean, it's so easy to make this from a twin to a king. You can do it one-handed while filming with the other. Uh, you got a, a large TV back here. Tons of overhead storage. If you do boondock camp, you've got the boondocker's best friend right above where you sleep. That is the fantastic vent fan. Let in some nice ventilation, some AC. Well, natural air conditioning from the outside. Let in some cool air, and this is a 75 inch long bed, so even if you're tall like me, you can still sit back, lay down, and stretch out. So, you know, I'm a big guy. I'm six foot four. I'm stretched out, guys. And, uh, all right, guys, again, I think we're gonna have a problem with this overheating, but what I was getting at, guys, I'm laid out in this bed, not even touching, feet not touching, I'm six foot four, so very comfortable bed. Um, <laughs> and again, I apologize, camera overheating, even with the AC on is on high and uh, cooling off in here pretty good. My camera's still overheating because like I was saying earlier, it's only been on a couple of hours. Um, they just hadn't had time to cool this RV off because it's 90 plus degrees outside and we're in the middle of a gravel parking lot with no shade. Even though it feels remarkably better outside in here than it does outside. Look at the bathroom real quick for my it overheats again. If it does, I'll just stick it in the freezer for a little bit and uh, cool it off. Unique bathroom setup on these 24.1s. 
basically the bathroom it can be private or it can open up and have a huge bathroom at least for a 25 foot motorhome you have a neo angle shower with a skylight you have a, a small little sink right here porcelain RV toilet and uh, closet right there to get your clothes get your shower beer well, not really, but not. Or shower or drink. <laughs> you don't have to be alcoholic. And, uh, and then when, or you can close yourself in if you want to, and, and still, and that way anybody else in the, in the RV can have access to the rear bedroom or access to the entire RV front to back. And one more thing I need to show you is the overhead bed. Now, this bed will not work with the motor running, so you gotta make sure the motor's off, which it is. And you've got a switch right here by the door. Turn it on, and you gotta raise and lower. Now, if you're gonna bring it down all the way, you gotta move these seats back or put the backrest down a little bit. You just lower it down. It's electric. And you've got the mattress up there. You've got the cargo netting safety net. It is rated for 500 pounds. Now I can't bring it down all the way because I'd have to move these seats, but you get the idea. And this is just a small single bed, but it does allow you to sleep up to five people in here. You do have another fantastic vent fan. And you just raise it up. So that works great. All in all, guys, this is a very nice motorhome. It's priced right at $59.9, and that includes our major systems inspection by our uh, certified RV techs that is completed after purchase. So even though I've checked a lot of the systems, just getting it ready for the video, they will officially check it for you. And what we do, guys, is to keep our prices down low, we check the major systems, which the major systems are we check and inspect and repair, if needed, the following systems. Uh, we make sure the slide out works, make sure the drivability is right, which we're going to drive in a little bit. We're going to bring the slide out in so we know that'll work. Check, make sure the refrigerator freezer gets to operating temperature. Make sure generator runs, which it obviously does, it puts out. We're going to make sure your roof air gets cold. We're going to check all your plumbing, water heater, water pump, toilet, faucet, spigots, you know, shower, speak, all that stuff. Make sure it works. Of course, I've taken it one step further, you know, and checked systems for my viewers that we don't normally cover, such as the TVs, the awnings. I've opened up all the bays and check all the lights. We don't cover lights, but, you know, they all work. And, you know, that's what we cover. Now, if there's something else, you know, we don't cover. Guys, we'll try this one more time. I got it nice and chilled off the freezer now, so we ought to be good. I'm keeps doing this i may have to uh rethink my whole using my gopro for my videos um but anyway what i was getting at guys we make sure the major stuff works the minor stuff we leave to the future buyer i mean guys fixing an rv any rv you buy you are going to have to do some work to anybody that tells you any difference lying to you uh you know you know we, we make sure the major stuff works that can ruin a trip you know, slide out not working can ruin a trip. Refrigerator not working can ruin a trip. Air conditioner not working can ruin a trip. Uh, you know, uh, let's just say for example, this light right here didn't work. It would be sold with that light not working. I mean, that's a 10 minute job, $15 part on, on Amazon or online, or you can go to an RV store and pay $30 for a part, you know, if you can't wait that long. Uh, that's not gonna ruin your trip. All the lights work, but I'm just saying hypothetically, it, let's just say it didn't or if it had a drawer that didn't work or was off track, which so far everything I can tell is fine on that part, um, then that would be up to you to fix that or not fix it. It's not gonna affect you using the RV one bit. But what I'm getting at guys is, you know, we, we make sure the major stuff works. We leave the little stuff to you. So you need to do one of two things when you buy an RV from us, you need to come look at it yourself before deciding to buy it. Make sure it's the right one for you make sure it in your opinion is nice enough for you to buy for you and your family to enjoy 
and or hire a third party inspection service guys an RV inspector I don't understand people I, I recommend an RV inspector on any used or even a brand new RV purchase I don't recommend a new RV purchase by no means but if you're gonna do one, I, I would still get an RV inspector if I was going to buy a new one I mean I see these things hundred twenty nine thousand dollars brand new on RV trader and I look at this one fifty nine nine I said what am I spending sixty thousand dollars extra on it's got less than 20,000 miles on it. I mean, this thing right here is a 200,000 mile motor if you take care of it. I'm never gonna wear this machine out. Why would I spend twice as much just so I can say something's new? And the bad thing is when you buy a brand new one, you drive it off the lot, no matter what you do with that RV. If you turn around, sell it to your neighbor, or you sell it back to the dealer, it is officially a used RV. It's only new for as long until you take it off the new dealer's lot then you paid for a new RV, but you own a used RV because if you trade it or sell it, even the next day after you buy a brand new RV, it is officially a used one. So that's something to think about. But you just paid 130 grand and it's now suddenly a used RV. It was new for five minutes. So uh, I don't understand people that do that. Just, just have more money than sense, I guess, or just don't know any better. When you buy something like this, even if you've got to do a little work to it, I mean, you're not going to do are you you think you're going to do anywhere close to sixty thousand dollars worth of work of course not not even a small percentage of that if even if any of that at all i mean the amount of money you lose between buying a you know the amount of money you say buying used is crazy compared to buying a new one and not only that guys when you go buy a new you think you go in there on a brand new one for the hundred twenty nine thousand dollars advertised for you think you just walk in there with a cashier's check for $129,000 and leave with a new RV? No, they're not going to do. That. Even if you even if you figured up your sales tax, included that with the $129,000 for the new one. No, new dealers and even even uh, dealers that sell used guys don't sell them for their advertised price. Oh, they're going to add all these fees: dock fees, prep fees, processing fees. Uh, get ready fees and more that can add hundreds if not thousands of dollars we don't charge those fees you pay the 59.9 plus applicable sales tax that's it if you're a Georgia resident there is a hundred a 50 to a hundred dollar highway impact fee that we have to charge all Georgia residents out-of-state residents don't pay that and if you're a Georgia resident there is a 40 to 50 dollar tag and title fee that's it we have no other fees that's 59.9 plus applicable sales tax out the door plus if you're a georgia resident you pay that you know 100 to 150 dollars worth of tag and title and highway impact fees that's it that's because the state makes us charge that now you go to these other dealers you know you're going to pay two or three thousand dollars in all these bogus fees which are nothing but dealer profit by the way it's nothing but a scam dock fees prep fees guys all that stuff is dealer profit a way for them to advertise a lower price but sell it for more by disguising the profit in the form of extra fees but no that doesn't stop there here comes what we call upsells and upsells are all these products that they push on you extended warranties uh or, or service contracts uh gap insurance uh tire wheel packages vacation packages uh tire and wheel packages exterior interior protection packages this 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 all these products that make you sound like the most amazing thing in the world you got to have it you're crazy if you don't buy it that's another 10 12 fifteen thousand dollars and you know we'll just use let's just say i have this let's just say they have this same exact motorhome at ripoff world for the same price 59.9 okay you come here you pay your sales tax just say you have to pay your sales tax here seven percent what is that 60 grand what was that forty two hundred dollars roughly so you're gonna pay like sixty four thousand two hundred dollars roughly out the door here you go to ribob world yeah you're gonna pay the same sales tax but you're going to pay two or three four thousand dollars and all these bogus fees they're going to sell you a five-year warranty for eight or nine thousand dollars that they paid twelve to fifteen hundred dollars for that's not going to pay anything when you file a claim if you read the fine print in detail, you're going to see that there's an out for them on pretty much any major repair under that warranty. And you don't believe me? Their YouTube's full of people who file claims on these aftermarket warranties. 
and they were denied 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 you have one out of four claims you may get a partial reimbursement of a few hundred dollars at best and you'd have to wait months and months and months to get that most of the time when you deal with these warranty companies these shops uh when you take them to them they make you pay for it and you have to fight the warranty company to get reimbursed for it because they don't want to fool with them you have to pay for it to repair out of pocket and then it's up to you whether you get paid from the warranty company or not um, and a lot of times when it's a warranty repair it sits on the back burner compared to a cash customer who can go anywhere to get their rv fixed so these service centers they take care of their cat that's royalty to a, to a service center as a cash customer because they know a cash customer can go anywhere to get their rv fixed a warranty customer can't so yeah they're going to take care of their cash customers first and get them in and out quick as possible get them back rving so keep that in mind and all this gap insurance if you bought it right you don't need gap insurance if you do need it get it through your auto insurance company fraction of the cost a dealer is marking all these products up four or five times dealer cost overcharging you for a product that's not worth the paper it's written on uh tire and wheel packages uh, roadside assist not worth the flip and believe me guys i can disprove all that stuff that they sell you and all the reason they're selling you that stuff because they're making thousands of dollars in profit that you're overpaying thousands of dollars for that's how people go in for a sixty thousand dollar motor home like this call the bank the next day they owe eighty thousand dollars on a motor home that was only priced fifty nine nine and it happens to people every day at these big corporate dealerships guys the bigger the dealer the bigger the price that you're going to pay they may not advertise a bigger price but by the time you pay all the fees and upsells yeah you're going to see why they got so big as a, as a dealership and why they own multiple locations nationwide because they maximize profit on everybody that buys from them. It's like these new ones. You're not going to buy a new one for 130 grand. You might pay 150 grand for something priced 129,000 by the time you leave with it, but you're not going to pay no 129. You're not going to pay that advertised price and leave with that RV. Nowhere even close. So that's how we save you money, guys. Our prices, haggle-free firm. They're some of the lowest in the country. We've got the nicest RV. So things 19,000 miles. You see the condition of it. It's nice. It's clean. It's not going to be on the market for long. If you're interested, give us a call. 706-965-7929. I'm going to pause the video for a minute. Bring the slide out in. Show you how that works. Show you what it looks like with it in. Then we'll get one of my salespeople and film us for a test drive. Hang tight. I'll be right back. All right, everybody. I've got everything put up. I've got the slide out room in. As with any slide out in any RV, towable or drivable, you want to go outside, make sure your awning's put up. You want to make sure all your outside bays are closed, latched, and locked. If your uh, slide out uh, doesn't have an awning topper and you were parked under a bunch of trees, you want to make sure that you don't have any limbs or debris or anything like that that can damage your slide out seal, bringing it in or out if you do. Uh, a broom or a, a little battery powered leaf blower or something like that over the top of your slide out from either the top of the RV or a, a step ladder on the side can can take care of all that and pretty simple guys motor off and don't have to set the parking brake once you do all that come inside make sure everything's clear on the inside uh, come over here hit that slide extend button Bring it all the way in till it stops. Like with any slide out, either bring it all the way in or all the way out. There is no in between. If the slide out cannot connect firmly against the wall, either in or out, it cannot keep the water out. The seal cannot connect. And that's true with any slide. And you can see, guys, it doesn't make much difference. It just gives you a little bit less walkway. You can still make your sofa bed. You do lose the ability to put your table up. Um, so you will have to bring your table in if you've got it set up to bring your slide out in but other than that guys you've got full access to your kitchen bedroom bathroom everything's exactly the same um doesn't actually this particular floor plan wouldn't look much different if it didn't even have a slide out so and you can see in here plenty of space um access to your bathroom your refrigerator all that good stuff so anyway let's go ahead and get this get somebody get loaded up for a cameraman and i'll see you in just a second from the driver's seat all right everybody now we're going to test drive this 2016 axis got my good buddy shane going to be our cameraman and uh, 
Hey, if you interested in this motor home, give them a call or a text anytime. Shane, what's your number? It's 423-347-8478. And he'll answer any questions about this motor home and uh, you know, give you any information about financing or trading, whatever whatever y'all want to do, he'll help you out there. And that's his cell number and call him for, you know, after hours, whatever. Yeah. He likes those two or three a.m. phone calls too. Yeah, you better text at that time. And let's take this little dude down the road. It's weird driving these because, you know, you're sitting up in a Class A, but the width is like a cab of a Class C. So, uh, pretty neat. And, of course, these things will run, too, for a motorhome. That kind of curved windshield makes you feel like you're in like a spaceship or something. It's just, but it's kind of cool, really. Gives you a different perspective. Lots of leg room, too. I like that. Comfortable, even for a big guy like me to drive. Nineteen thousand six hundred and twenty-seven miles. Don't think you got to worry about wearing this one out. Not for a long, long, long time. And it does have the Ford five-speed torque shift transmission, which is their version of an Allison. So everything's good and heavy duty. And like I said, these are very, very popular little motorhomes. Perfect for state parks, older campgrounds and a breeze to drive. You don't believe how good they turn. Oh, <laughs> I miss keeping up with the cars going up this hill from a dead stop. Take it up the interstate like I always do. We'll do an acceleration test on the on ramp, check the cruise control, see how it does, ground trucks and stuff like that, and uh, go from there. Mirrors are great, visibility is great. And mostly a clear ramp here. Get on a little bit. motorhome guys these are great for older parks state parks for those of you that want a class a you like the looks of it the drivability worried about the size of it this is a great option for you there's a reason why we sell these things so quick i mean these things are uh, just such a great driving little motorhome literally no wind noise Air feels great. Yeah, this thing's up, I man. It's just nice and smooth. You've got that power shade, so you can bring it down a little bit if you want to. Um, if you got the sun in the wrong spot, let's hit the uh, 
brakes here, see how it does. I don't feel any rotor shake. I, I, this thing does, I, I, I don't see any, any problem with it. Shifts good, brakes good, pulls good. I don't feel, I'm not fighting anything at highway speeds. Excellent acceleration. And like I said, guys, fuel mileage on these things because of the size and the shape from what I'm reading online, and please do your own research on that, is, is well above most Class A's and Class C's. Um, and there's different forms you can research that. So just don't take my word for it about how it drives. Come check it out for yourself and uh, give Shane a call or a text. Make sure somebody had not beat you to it. Shane, what's your number? Yeah, it's 423-347-8478. Smash us a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button, guys. Best way to support the channel. And uh, thanks for riding along with us. And enjoyed having you. And look forward to seeing you here in beautiful Ringgold, Georgia.